Welcome to Asian Review. I'm your host, Bill Sharp. Our show today is Asia's front door of the Pacific Islands, and our guest is Dr. Fabrizio Bozzato. Dr. Bozzato holds a number of uh, research positions in various institutions in Taiwan, Japan, Italy, Australia, uh, and the Czech Republic. He indeed is a specialist on the Pacific Islands. Uh, but of all his qualifications, perhaps the most impressive one is uh, his membership, uh, where I met him indeed, in a, our Wednesday night Taiwan-based dinner club. And so I think what we're going to do today is we're going to dedicate this show to that Wednesday night gentlemen's dinner club. It's perfectly fine to me. Great. Actually, it's good to see it's you. A pleasure uh, to really, it's really good to see you. Well, congratulations. Uh, you've just finished your PhD. You are a newly Thank minted you. PhD, and I'm sure that you have a great career ahead of you. It's uh, good to see you again. Well, okay, it's um, a pleasure. the show today, as I announced, Asia's front door, the Pacific Islands. So, so let's let's get right into it. In fact. Um, uh, could you guys put up that map of the um, uh, of the South Pacific that I sent you? We don't have that. Uh oh. Okay. Uh, well, there seems to be. I, I sent a map to these guys, but I don't know. Uh, maybe got lost in cyber cyber air. Okay. But anyway. Um, let, let's start off with a brief overview or summary of the geostrategic geo situation in the Pacific Islands. Well, uh, I'd like to start with a biological metaphor. Uh, the geopolitical DNA of the region is changing rapidly. Okay. It, it used to be a um, geopolitical backwater, uh, just something like 20, back to 20 years ago. But now uh, the, there are new transformational variables in the regional equation. Uh, the region is undergoing a process of oceanization that was um, uh, foreseen very clearly by the late Ron Krakum in, in the early 2000s. Uh, now, those, uh, the new uh, Asian partners are offering uh, the Pacific Island countries fresh partnership options new development alternatives, and new foreign policy options. Uh, of course, the, 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 the new uh, big guy on the block is China. Mm. Uh, the the US Journal, has sort of forgotten uh, about the Pacific uh, Islands, hasn't it? Sorry, could you repeat the question? OK, sure. The US has sort of forgotten about the Pacific Islands. Well, uh, some analysts contend so. Uh, it is a little bit unfair toward the U.S., but because the U.S. Uh, being the only global superpower is distracted uh, from the Pacific, uh, for instance, uh, by what is by the ongoing developments in the Middle East and other regions. But uh, it is true that the region uh, has been and is being overlooked by Washington. Uh, and that uh, created a strategic opportunity for China to step in. That, that's really interesting, because when Kurt Campbell was the Assistant Secretary of State for East Asian and Pacific Affairs, he put a lot of emphasis on the Pacific Islands. But that emphasis seems to have eroded uh, since his time. But it wasn't really that long ago. But. Um, Two other countries have played a prominent role in the Pacific Islands, and one is Australia and the other is New Zealand. So what, um, can you bring us up to date on what their stance is on the islands? Well, uh, they continue to be uh, engaged over the last decade. Uh, they are somehow uh, renewing their effort to engage, uh, stay engaged with the islands. Australia is uh, the top aid provider to the region. It has an essential role, especially in Melanesia. Uh, New Zealand has, uh, New Zealand resources are more limited, uh, but it, it, it plays a crucial role in, 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 in a sub-region like Polynesia. Uh, Signally, yesterday, New Zealand foreign minister uh, declared that his country is going to shift the focus of his of its uh, Pacific engagement from aid to development. 
because the development was of the, of the keywords or the buzzwords now in, in, the, in the Pacific and the region, in the South Pacific. China understood it very well. Uh, the Chinese are providing key infrastructural uh, development aid to the region, financial aid. Uh, the bulk of their, of their uh, assistance to the region is in the form of concessional loans. This, of course, is also creating dependency and a debt threat, potentially. Uh, so, uh, if we want to sum up the situation, we, we could say that China is uh, eroding uh, the traditional powers influence in the region, including the US, Australia, New Zealand, and we shouldn't forget France as well. Mm, interesting, interesting. Um, tell us about what is going on in Melanesia. You, you seem to have a lot of concern about what's going on there. Yes, it's uh, the most geopolitically volatile uh, sub-region of the Pacific Islands region. Uh, the region uh, is divided into three parts, uh, three uh, um, ethnogeographic regions, Melanesia, Polynesia, Micronesia. Uh, the bulk of U.S. strategic interest is in, is in Micronesia. But Melanesia... You, Micronesia uh, and the Marshalls, uh, right? Responsibility of Australia, sorry? I, I say most of the U.S. interest is in... Um, uh, Micronesia. States of Micronesia and the Marshall Islands, correct? Yes, the Marshall Islands, yes, are, are part of Micronesia. Basically, we have the, the three okay. uh, compact treaty states, Marshall Islands, Federal States of Micronesia, Palau, uh, plus the Commonwealth of Northern Mariana Islands, uh, Guam, uh, the only Micronesia. Then in Polynesia, the U.S. has uh, American Samoa. Mm. But uh, Melanesia is, is, is uh, the, the sub-region which is giving a uh, big headache uh, to countries like Australia. Uh, well, uh, the, the regional system mission to the Samoa Islands just ended uh, basically a few days ago, and now uh, it's difficult to foresee where the Samoa Islands are heading if they will be able to uh, retain the, the, their newfound stability. Uh, actually, the, the, the Samoa Islands are at, uh, one of the six diplomatic allies that Taiwan is in the region, but they've been counted quite uh, successfully by China. Uh, China has strong, uh, has strong economic presence in that country. Uh, Taiwan is um, responding by uh, stepping up its diplomatic engagement with, with the Solomon Islands. Uh, but there could be new developments in the next months. Then uh, we could even have a new country in Melanesia by uh, 2018. What would that be called? Uh, well, New Caledonia. Which is oh, oh that's right, that's right. Actually, territory. that's my next question. That's my next question. Because New Caledonia is just on the verge of declaring itself independent from France, correct? Yes, they will have a referendum. Uh, well, the, the outcome is not uh, certain because the, the, the in indigenous New Caledonians, the Canucks, are 39% of the populations, uh, the Europeans are 27% of the populations, Caledonians, most Europeans are another 9% of the population, and the rest are of a mixed background. Uh, well, um, a previous referendum, the first referendum was uh, boycotted by the uh, National Socialist Canadian Liberation Front. Uh, so uh, it's not, um, the outcome could be uh, in the sense that New Caledonia will stay with France, uh, but again, there's another uh, potential new country in the region, Bougainville, uh, same population of uh, New Caledonia, roughly 250,000 people, uh, much poorer than New Caledonia, uh, and it currently it is a province, uh, an autonomous province of Papua New Guinea. Let, let, uh, let's Papua stop New Guinea, right there for a second. Gonna, sorry. Okay, Bougainvillea, that has been a troubled area for a really long time, hasn't it? I, I mean, it's got very wealthy mining deposits. Like 5,000 leaves. Right. Yeah. And then in 2001, an autonomous Bougainville government was established, and they negotiated an independence referendum with, with Port Moresby. Uh, but, well, it, it, Bougainville is a case that uh, the most likely um, referendum to succeed. In that case, we'll have a new uh, 
um, poor, uh, unstable country in Melanesia, uh, they are counting on uh, the, an Australian uh, mining company, Rio Tinto, uh, in order to fund a new state. They have a, a, a copper mine which was closed by Rio Tinto because of the civil unrest there. Uh, so uh, they could succeed with um, gaining independence, but they could fail as a state. Okay. Well, you know, before we go any further, um, I'm just really kind of curious here. How did somebody from Italy get interested in the Pacific Islands? Well, uh, by studying at the University of Tasmania. Uh, That'll uh, do it. I, <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I was uh, researching my first um, MA thesis at the University of Milan, I had an opportunity to go to Australia and then there I met some people, I decided to stay for a while, and through Australia I got uh, involved in, 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 in Pacific Island studies. I had the, the opportunity and privilege of uh, lecturing at the University of Fiji, mm. and I, well, uh, I, got, I got the Pacific bug, and you know, I still, I, I, there's, there's no sign that I'm going to heal from that anytime soon. Well, what took you from the University of Tasmania to Taiwan then? Then, when I, I was researching my second master thesis at the University of Tasmania, which uh, was about uh, Holy See-China relations, I met the um, Taiwanese ambassador to the Holy See, and he strongly advised me to pursue doctoral studies in, in Taiwan, and so here I am. <laughs> That's really interesting. That's really interesting. Well, um, okay, the Solomon Islands. Um, there's been a constant kind of seesawing back and forth uh, between, uh, well, Solomon Islands in the middle, China on one end, Taiwan on the other, back and forth, back and yes, forth. So what's the status there today? What's the story in the Solomon Islands today? Well, uh, after Ramsey lived, uh, Ramsey again is a regional assistant mission to the Solomon Islands, uh, as, uh, after the end of, of, of uh, Ramsey, uh, Prime Minister Manasseh Sogavari is still very much in power. Uh, now, uh, the country uh, will have to fend for itself. Uh, there's still a, a, an ethnic conflict lurking, uh, you know, under the ashes. Uh, the two main islands, the Solomon Islands, are Guadalcanal and Malaita. Uh, their rivalry uh, has been the, the, the was the prime cause uh, for the Ramsey to exist. Uh, the, the, in the past, they had a stro uh, strong civil war. Uh, and now, uh, the country must uh, find uh, new reasons for unity. Um, there are uh, social and economic problems. Uh, China uh, signal is being a destructive force there. Uh, illegal logging is still uh, very much uh, a, 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 um, unabated in, in, the, in the islands. Much of that uh, timber ends up in China. Uh, the Taiwanese are helping, uh, but uh, the Solomon Islands are big enough. It, the Solomon Islands is uh, one of the few Pacific, Pacific Island countries which are not microstates. Uh, you are a microstate when your population is well, lower than half a million let's, people. Yeah. Let, let's hold up right here because I'm getting told that we have to take a break. Okay? Okay. Very so good. we'll be back in one minute. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, 25 talk shows by 25 dedicated hosts every week helping us to explore and understand the issues and events in and affecting our state. Great content for Hawaii from ThinkTech. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know it's not supposed to be in your everyday. So protect your everyday. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Aloha, I'm Richard Concepcion, the host of Hispanic Hawaii. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. 
we will bring you entertainment, educational, and also we tell you what is happening right here within our community. Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. <music>
So, well, it's your article, so I'll let you explain it and tell, it to, tell the audience about it. Well, uh, yes, the Vatican, the Holy See, precisely, because the Holy See is the uh, asserts its sovereignty over the Vatican city-state, the Holy See is the supreme government of the Catholic Church. As such, it enjoys international personality and entertains diplomatic relations with, um, uh, well, to be precise, uh, 185, 83 states. Mm -hmm. uh, the last to recognize the Holy See uh, was uh, Myanmar. Uh, and yes, it's the only European ally, that diplomatic ally that the Republic of China, uh, aka Taiwan, as in Europe. And as some uh, commentators uh, argue, it is the only diplomatic service of note in Taipei. That, it's a little bit unfair, but uh, it, it, it conveys an idea of the geopolitical importance of the Holy See. Um, the Holy See established diplomatic relations with the Republic of China in 1942. Uh, then they, um, since uh, 1970, um, they had just a, a chargé d'affaires ad interim, pro tempore here in, in, in Taipei. But, uh, you know, to date, relations between the Republic of China and Taiwan and the Holy See are cordial and friendly. Uh, they both shared uh, preoccupation with the human rights. Uh, and, and Taiwan uh, is uh, a democracy which uh, guarantees freedom of religion to uh, local Catholics, to the mm -hmm. Catholic Church in Taiwan. They are mm -hmm. roughly 1% of the population. Uh, China does not. Uh, China uh, uh, grants freedom of worship, but uh, it uh, implements a strong uh, control over the Catholic Church in China, which is divided into two segments, the Patriotic Church, uh, which is recognized by the state, and uh, the underground church. Uh, then, uh, the, Holy See, uh, the Holy See's diplomatic priority is uh, twofold, freedom of religion for Catholics and uh, defense of human rights. The, uh, the Holy See is not interested in uh, signing free trade agreements, in receiving development aids, uh, etc., etc. So, uh, this is basically the reason why. Uh, so, basically, what you're is, saying is yeah. China, with all its money, isn't going to be able to. I, 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 this sounds a little bit crude putting it this way, but so you'll forgive me. It's not going to be able to buy off the Vatican. Uh, no. I believe the, the Vatican is the only uh, case of a state that uh, cannot be bought off. Um, what uh, raised uh, a substantial amount of rumors about uh, the Holy See relocating its non that, by the way, it, it, it considers as its non to the whole of China, mm -hmm. from Taipei to Beijing, is the charm offensive that since 2014, Pope Francis uh, has been uh, conducting toward Beijing. Mm. Uh, well, uh, the negotiation has centered on the appointment of bishops, uh, but uh, they could also precipitate uh, a, a diplomatic, uh, the, the normalization of relations between the Holy See and China. Uh, that's a possibility we can rule out, but it's uh, at uh, this stage, it is very premature to uh, talk about normalization of relations you, between you know, this, this uh, the a, Vatican a little bit, and, and a Beijing. Little bit, uh, uh, even the, the Vatican Secretary of State, uh, Cardinal Parolin, at the Davos Economic Forum uh, in, in January 2017, has declared it is still a long way, and which requires a lot of uh, patience. So, uh, it's, if it's going to happen, it's not going to happen uh, tomorrow or tomorrow after. Okay. Uh, it will be, we still have a few years to come. Let's move on and, from uh, here because we just have a couple of minutes left. Um, you know, um, this, in the couple of minutes we have left, sorry, this always happens to us. We've run out of time, but uh, we do have a couple of minutes left. What's, what, what, in Italy, what's the basic Italian view of the Asia Pacific region? Well, uh, you know, Italy as an uh, export-oriented economy, mm -hmm. uh, Asia-Pacific has become the, economy, the global economic powerhouse, 
So, uh, in the last years, Italy has renewed uh, its effort to, to engage with the region. Uh, quite successfully, uh, export, Italian exports to uh, key countries in Asia Pacific uh, are on the rise. Uh, then, with some of the, of the countries in Asia Pacific, like Australia, for instance, Italy shares uh, an uh, identity of views uh, and uh, in the geopolitical uh, closeness. Uh, I had some data here. For instance, uh, Italy's um, exports to Oceania uh, uh, between 2010 and 2015 has grown uh, by uh, 30 percent, uh, and uh, trade with Oceania has grown by 98 percent. Uh, wow. So uh, Italy is implementing a, 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 a diplomacy with a strong economic component in Asia Pacific. And with some countries there, Italy has, has a, a very um, long history. For instance, the, the Treaty of, of Trade and Friendship between Italy and Japan was signed in 1866. We, we think, of, you know, so much of the initial Western contact with Asia came out of Venice, the great Venice traders, you know, uh, Marco Polo and all that, making yes. their way to Cathay. And, and, and it's almost like a fairy tale in a way. Um, yes. And, and it's also interesting to me to note that Italy is a country that's willing to stick its neck out a bit for Taiwan when it comes to weapons development, because as you and I discussed, that there's um, some very cutting-edge mine sweepers, uh, mine layers actually, I think they are, being developed in Italian shipyards. Yes. So um, we're getting down to our last minute here. Um, I'm just thinking, is there anything else you'd like to say in our last minute? Well, uh, I will uh, shift the focus back uh, to the Pacific Islands region. Okay. Uh, there's a, a fundamental misunderstanding among Western scholars about China's strategic culture. Mm -hmm. uh, they tend to see uh, China as a strategic threat in the, in the region. Uh, in the Pacific Islands. Besides a military threat, uh, it is not. The Chinese... Uh, by definition, uh, by tradition, prefer an indirect approach, and they prefer to use um, extra military means, signally, namely, economic means. So if the U.S. Uh, intends to contain uh, China in the region, it should put its wallet where its mouth is. That's, a fundamental <laughs> That's piece good of advice, advice for people in Washington. Washington. I hope they're listening. Uh, well, it's really good to have you on the show. It's good to see you again. And again, congratulations on this, getting your PhD. It sounds like you've got a wonderful Thank career you. ahead of you. You already have so many connections with so many research institutes spread around the world. It's really impressive. Well, it's, it's globalization, you know. Okay, so and be sure to say hello to all my friends in the Wednesday Night Dinner Club. I'll be glad to oblige, and we're very much looking forward to your next visit to Taipei. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you very much for joining us today. We'll see you again next week right here. Bye now. Goodbye.